Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live stream. My name is Jake Rhodes with ADJ, and today we're going to be going over the FocusBot 4Z, the 5Z, and the 6Z. I will be monitoring questions through our Facebook live stream through my iPad here. So if you have any questions or want to say hi, feel free to shout us out, and uh, I'll be able to see them right here. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's really nice, as I usually say, to be able to get, have this opportunity to reach out to you guys and be able to have uh, you know, such close interaction with our audiences during these uh, unprecedented times uh, for our industry. That being said, just going to give it another minute or two while we uh, all get in here. All right, well, let's get started. So before we show anything, I just want to talk about these fixtures that I have behind me. Like I said, we're going over the 4Z, the 5Z, and the 6Z. So we started out, obviously, with the Focus Spot 1, Focus Spot 2, and we've uh, gone up from there uh, to the Focus Spot 2. Now we have the Focus Spot 2X, which is the very smaller, which is the small uh, focus, the small unit, smallest unit in the Focus Spot series now. Uh, which is a hundred, which we stepped up from the Focus Spot 2 to the Focus Spot 2X, and that's the same exact unit, except now it's a 100 watt chip and it has both circular and linear prisms. And uh, evolving, evolving from there, we went to the Focus Spot 4Z, which is this unit right here. And let me clear this out so you can get a little bit better glimpse, glimpse of the units and their size. So it's a very moderate level, moderately sized moving head, you know, not too big, not too over cumbersome to work with. So this it has a fe this features a 200 watt LED. So from the previous series, it's a huge step up right there. And we really made this unit a lot for integrators, uh, installations, church, churches, nightclubs, anyone that needed a small, compact, but powerful um, spot unit. Not a lot of people need all the bells and whistles that come with the hybrid unit, say, like our CMY300. That's a great unit, and I personally think if you can go for you know, the CMY300 and you have the budget for them, go for it. You will not be disappointed. But a lot of the times you don't have the budget and you need multiple units and can't afford you know, the larger spec, higher quality items. And that's where the Focus Spot series takes over. Um, the way I like to say it, it's really good bang for your buck. So we had the four, we had that out for a little bit, and it did really, really well. Uh, but a lot of people were saying, especially for our church and church and theatrical more market integrators, they love the four. It, it was perfect for a lot of like small to mid-sized theaters, especially now, I'm sorry, churches, especially now they are going into more of a live streaming service. However, there's some things that the church and th more theatrical markets require that the 4Z didn't have. And that's why we brought, we went to back to the drawing board with the 4Z and introduced the 5Z. They're essentially on the outside, they look exactly the same. They're the, exactly the same body, exactly the same menu. On, vi on a far visual inspection, you really couldn't tell the differences. But when we turn them on, they're vastly different. In, with what the hardware they have inside. And we'll go over exactly what differences those are, but in short, we added a light frost and a heavy frost. So now, instead of just being a spotlight with the 4Z, you're also, it's more of a hybrid type unit, and you're capable of achieving light and soft uh, and heavy washes, which is a very cool feature coming from a, such a small light. Uh, it's, kind of, it's quite amazing what features we've actually jam-packed in here. Another thing that the 4Z was lacking for those more high, higher end integrators was more colors. Both of these units have color wheels. On the 4Z, we only have one, but on the 5Z, we've had two. The first color wheel is the same saturates, really nice dark crisp colors that we look for in most color wheeled uh, moving heads. But the second wheel is when we start to get a little more interesting. We also have integrated with that second wheel Kelvin color corrected Kelvin filters so you can get Kelvin corrected stage washes especially with that light and heavy frost. We have a lot more pastels that you can use so it's not such harsh deep colors 
more like um, light atmospheric kind of colors that you can use, especially for the churches. Um, you know, you don't really want dark saturates all the times. Uh, and we also completely revamped the gobo wheel. Uh, me and another coworker, uh, Bob Mentley, he, him and I had a, basically went back to the drawing board and we just revamped the gobo wheel for, for theatrical and church uh, options, which include more breakup options and textures, so you can really uh, get some really cool designs out of it. Let's see, I'm just going to take a look at the chat really quick, see who we have here. Armin, hello, from Armenia. Armin from Armenia, hello. <laughs> Let's see, Melissa Hagman, hello. How's it going, Melissa? Patrick from Dusseldorf, Germany. What's up, Patrick? How's it going? And we got a bunch of people watching. Hi, guys. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so that's where the 5Z takes in place uh, in the market. So it's basically like a 4Z with a lot more bells and whistles. And then the bad boy down there, as you can see, he's substantially bigger than the 4Z. And the 5Z is our focus bot 6Z. And if you're familiar with ADJ's line, it kind of takes the place of the Vizzy BSW 300, which is a 300 watt beam spot wash fixture. Except personally, I think it does it a lot better. And um, in being in the focus spot line doesn't mean that it's not as, as good as a Vizzy line. Uh, it's, it's a very talented fi uh, feature. It's a fixture, excuse me. Uh, the effect I have here in my background is actually the focus spot 6Zs as well, if you are interested. Um, so the 6Z takes the 5Z to a whole nother level. We upgraded the LED engine to a th uh, 300 watts, which is another 100 watts on top of that. And you would think, oh, well, it gains a decent amount of brightness. Actually, the way we've optimized the LED chip, it gains almost twice the amount of brightness. Uh, so the 4Z and the 5Z have around four to 5,000 lumens, and the 6Z is 10,000 plus lumens. Uh, we have full photometric charts online if you want to take a look at those to see for yourself. Very powerful units. And you need the power because there's a lot of different morphing and layering that you can do with this unit. Um, so we talked about the 4 and the 5, uh, and the 6Z takes some of those similar attributes and will uh, <clears throat> basically make them better, honestly, uh, to say the least. So we have, uh, two we have two color wheels as well, very similar to what we have on the 5. We have uh, two gobo wheels, and that's where we, it steps up from the 4 and 5Z, which only have one gobo wheel. While the 5Z is upgraded gobos for the house of worship, the 6Z takes it to a whole other level. Um, and while it doesn't have shutters or um, uh, framing shutters, excuse me, or um, an animation wheel as a lot of high-end lights do, that two, the, the two gobo wheels is what uh, makes it some really cool effects. So as you can see behind me, this doesn't look like just a single, a single uh, gobo. And that's because it's not. It's actually two different gobos. And the really cool thing about these uh, gobo wheels in the 6Z is that they're all, they're both the wheels are replaceable and rotatable, meaning you can put your own custom gobos in any of the slots, except for open. Don't put a gobo in the open slot. Uh, then you will never be able to have an open spot. I've seen that happen. It's kind of funny. But it allows you to layer the gobos on top of each other and allows for this really cool gobo morphing effect um, in place of an animation wheel. Uh, let's see what else. There's also in the 4 and 5Z, I mean in the 5 and 6Z, we have also placed this really cool dichroic four color split gobo. And um, that was Bob Mentley's idea. And I think it's a really good idea because it really just has that for a church, you'll know exactly what we're talking about, that stained glass effect, like the lights coming in through the windows. But now you can achieve that straight from, the fa straight from us. You know, before, you would have to b purchase another, uh, depending where you're getting your gobo, 150 on the cheap end to $300 for a really nice sized gobo. Again, just depending on what vendor you're going through. But from us, you get that straight from the factory. And we'll show, don't worry, we'll show all of this in a second. Uh, another thing that the 6C has that the 5 and 4Z don't have is a motorized iris. So if you need to iris down for more, if you want to get more aerial effects, um, more of a tighter beam, you can do that 
with the 6C as well. And carries over from the 5, you have a light and heavy frost, so not just a spot unit, even though it is a sp focus spot series, it's almost like a hybrid type unit, and you can achieve frosted washes as well. Let's see, we have a comment. Gary says, I just purchased a pair of 4Zs. So watching this is somewhat upsetting, haha. -ha. Yes, haha. -ha. I only need them for weddings, though. They're more than capable of doing what I need. I absolutely love them. You know, honestly, Gary, the 4Zs are great units. And while the 5Zs do have extra feature sets, it do don't be discouraged from trying out the 4Z. You know, a lot of the times people want to say, oh, I need this, I need that, I want this. And in reality, you don't really need it. And that's why we, we have the 4Z, because it's such, it's such a super simple option. But I understand why you would want the 5Zs, because they are very cool units. Uh, Jeff, how fast are the movements? We'll get into that. They're pretty quick, considering, uh, well, they are pretty small units, so they, they don't have a lot of weight to them. Um, so they are pretty quick. We'll, I'll show you that in a little bit, uh, once we get go, done going through the lights. Um, I think I've kind of gone over a general overview of each of these lights. Um, let's do a shootout and let's see what they look like. So <clears throat> I'm going to be doing all of this live. I wanted you guys to see this exactly how I do it and you know me focusing it and zooming in and out all of it live so you can see exactly how these lights work. The only thing I've done is have, I have a, a pan and tilt slash intensity um, a preset here. So all I can do is now they're all to the same spot. That's all I did. Everything else you're going to see is live. So let's start with the 4Z. And I'm going to throw the 5Z up at the same time, because essentially these are very similar units. So the first thing we're going to go through is color. So here's our first color on our first wheel. And again, two different units, same exact color. This is going to be our red. Then we move to our orange. And they, uh, these are going to be nice darker saturates. Yellow. Green. Nice, deep, saturate blue. And as I say in almost every single one of my live streams, the camera may distort um, some colors and some things. But again, it's very true to the eye. And I won't lie to you guys. If, if something doesn't look good, I, I will say it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, moving on, pink, which is a nice light pink, or purple. Then we have more of a cyan, light blue. magenta, and that's the first color wheel. And for the 4Z, that's all you get. We're going to wait to talk about the second color wheel on the 5Z. The, by the way, the 4Z is the one on your right. For instance, I will, uh, so that's the 4Z right there. Now let's talk about gobos. I'm going to take the 5Z out since they're almost completely similar, and we'll just center out the unit 4Z here. There we go. All right. So these were the standard gobos that came with the unit. So this is more of a circular, circular dot. And fun fact, this is the only gobo we actually kept for the 5Z, because I personally really love this gobo and the aerial effects it makes with haze in the air. I think it is a, a beautiful gobo. And I am the, and so basically I was like, we need to keep this one because I personally think this is really, really good and the rest of them can be revamped. So, like I said, these are rot rotatable and replaceable as well as indexable. So uh, I'll give you a better example of this indexing when we get to a, a fourth gobo in but essentially you can balance the gobo. So if you wanted to put a, 
a custom gobo in here, like for instance, a custom logo for the church or, you know, Happy Easter or whatever you would like, you can throw your own custom gobo in here and balance it out. And as well as indexing, we have rotation. And you, it's going to be a little hard to notice on the stream, but I have this rotating as slow as it possibly can, and it is very slow and very smooth. Most of the time, especially for where these units are going to be used, you're going to want you're going to want the unit to be able to have slow and smooth movements, as opposed to you know anything can be nice and fast, uh, but sm slow and smooth is better in my opinion, especially for the th church and theatrical environments. Okay, moving on, we have this nice texture breakup option. Let me slow that down. And uh, this is really nice when you apply it with the prisms, which we will talk about in a little bit. We have a circular uh, warp here. And I'm just making these gobo names up on the fly, so. And then here is my cross. And this is where I'm going to show you what gobo indexing is. So you'll notice that this gobo is a little crooked, and that's mostly because of how I'm shooting it. It's at a slight angle. And when you put in gobos to the gobo, um, gobo wheel, you're not exactly going to know where the exact center of the light is. For instance, when you're focusing an ellipsoidal unit, you have to get the gobo completely straight. Otherwise, well, it won't be straight. <laughs> but in a moving head, since we have uh, gobo indexing, I can either make this into an X, very nice flat, and this looks a little weird just because of where I have the camera at, but this is nice uh, an X, and then I can take this straight up and down, and now I have a perfect cross. So if I had some text in there, I can orientate this any way how I want. Next we have this pinwheel effect, more of a texture breakups, and that's it. That's all the gobos you get on the four. You, after that, you start to get into gobo shake, which you can shake either slow or fast. And it gets pretty fast. I, I, um, I use this quite a lot, gobo shake feature in beam units, because I actually like applying a go, uh, color on top of this. And it'll actually bounce back and forth between each color. But for spot or wash units, I don't really use Gobo Shake. But you can use this on a very slow shake. With a um, morphing effect. I'm sorry, not a morphing effect. With a prism effect. And you can add an, an added layer of intensity. And these you can shake all of them. Shake, shake. Shake, shake, and shake it. All right. <laughs> I'm done embarrassing myself. So now I'm back to my open spot. I'm going to pan and tilt a little bit down here. On this unit, you have an 11 to 22 degree zoom range. So I will go sh nice down and sharp with you guys. So it has a pretty nice uh, focus point in. And then we can take it all the way out wide. And I, like I said, I'm doing this manually. So when you are doing this, obviously, live, I mean, recorded, it will track together. And then there you go, you have a nice wide spot. And then you can get that even wider with the five when you start talking in, when you start talking about frosts. But like I said, the 4Z does not have frosts. This is the basic of the units. I'm going to throw my warp gobo in here. And you'll notice I'm very far zoomed in. And that's because I am going to start throwing in my circular prism. I'm going to focus this up a little bit so it looks a little better. Make this look nice for you guys. Cool. There we go. So this is the circular prism. And talking on modularity here for a second, everything is almost on its own independent driver or wheel, uh, which is very, <laughs> Edgar says, slow shake, Jake. That's right. Um, <clears throat> which is very very important to be modular on these because then you can start stacking effects on top of one another. For instance, I am going to take this effect and going to slowly rotate it clockwise. 
Don't get no hypno trance on me, guys. Karen, hey, Karen, how's it going? Uh, now I'm going to take my prism and rotate it the other way, counterclockwise, and now we have a nice little effect, and that is nice and smooth. And of course, I can go a lot faster with this to where it's nice and blurred out, but uh, again, I think it's more impress impressive to show <coughs> how smooth a, a light can travel versus how fast. So that is our circular prism, and of course you can layer color on top of that to have colorized effects. And I don't have any, any haze in the air. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is you can actually also split colors on the color wheel, but for any of you that is who know color wheels, that is a pretty standard feature. So the only thing you cannot stack on top of one another, and that's just because there really isn't enough space inside this unit to do so, is the prisms. So I cannot stack linear and circular pr prism in this, but it does have it. So I will stack my prism. And again, indexing. This is where indexing becomes very important. So not only can my, pris my gobos index, my prisms can index as well. So I can either rotate this nice and fast or slow it down to a nice slow rotation or I can let's say if I want it perfectly up and down or side to side I can do that and the linear prism is really nice for extending effects across a wide area for instance if you're using these as uh, you know if you have these on like a side light position you can use the linear prism to take that effect or you know probably not wouldn't use this I'd probably take either this effect or my linear effect oh, that's in shaking let me go back to our standard I would take this linear effect stop my movement so I have them all moving left to right, and now I have a great texture effect moving across my stage or church venue. Or you can rotate it and have fun and, uh, you know, have all the beamage. <laughs> so, those are pretty much all the features on the Focus Spot 4Z. Let's look at dimming. Now, <clears throat> this may not be evident to you. Well, let's put it this way. Let's start from open and not have anything. So let's do a three second fade. Three second fade with no different sine curves or any different dimming modes and one, two, three, and zero. And see how it's a little uh, fast? Well, in a lot of options before the, this four, five, and six series, you would just have to be okay with that and have a slight timer. But now, exactly ADJ, beamage. I love that term. I will never stop using it. Uh, Eric says, gobos are nice and tight, look very crisp. Yes, they are. Um, so now we can go into my beam effects and I can choose different dimming curves to use. Right now, this says dimming curve standard and you can actually uh, show this, uh, set the, this dimming curve on the menu and it will set to that but I can go through my console and I'm gonna set the dimming curve to theater and that's just because well I have my whole backgrounds in theater so I am more drawn to that sine incandescent dimming curve and now with that same three second fade you can see the difference this makes and go that's a huge dramatic difference from the snap off that we just saw without a dimming mode. So if you are having dimming issues and you don't like how the unit is dimming, look at your beam effects or um, within your, the, depending on what console you're using. Right now I'm using the Obsidian Controls NX2 and this is under beam effects and I can choose my curve. And that's really important because, you know, for some movement, for some fades, if you're using them in theatrical or church environments, you're gonna want a nice slow fade out. Well, these uh, other times you're going to want a nice snap off. 
And that kind of, kind of, kind of, excuse me, that's going to kind of uh, conclude the 4Z. Josh, good. Any new ellipsoidals? Actually, Josh, just on Tuesday, I went over both our Encore Profile Pro Color and Encore Profile Pro Warm White. That video you can check out on our YouTube page or here on Facebook. And I went over a lot of really good information on that stream. If you're interested, check it out. And we also have an Encore Profile Pro Color and Warm White Features video coming out very soon. Let's talk about the 5Z. All right, so I'm going to take this into the center here. And like we already went over, we have the same exact colors in the first wheel, but we have an additional second color wheel to choose from, a lot more color options. And for me, Jordan uh, Roblick asks, what about the noise? Quiet enough for theaters? And uh, I will actually address that question in just one second as soon as I'm done going over the 5Z. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, we have a solution for uh, the decibel levels these uh, units out emit. So here is the second color wheel. So this is more of a CTB color correction. So that's a nice blue spot. And now we have a nice darker blue indigo. Here is the warm white Kelvin corrected light uh, filter. So this is more of a, you know, I think this is probably around a 3500. It's a little more white than a 3200 Kelvin, but needless to say, this is a warmer white Kelvin filter. So instead of having this open blue spot, and someone asked earlier, what's the CRI? And with these units, um, the CRI isn't uh, extraordinarily high. Yeah, I believe it's around 80. Uh, I, you can check out the photometrics online and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but with the, col with the color filters, it really helps. Um, it's not, it doesn't really raise the CRI higher, but it helps correct this blue light more, a higher blue. Uh, there's a lot more blue in the open spot and helps it be more of a daylight option. Moving on, we have a, a nicer green to choose from as well, uh, a better, a nice yellow, more pastel yellow, and a UV filter. And then here is another Kelvin filter, and this one's a little bit more warm white, has a little bit more red in it. And these are really just so you can choose and pick which one you want to use depending on what different skin tones people are working with. And I went over this a lot in my last video on Tuesday, but lighting for different skin tones uh, can be very challenging depending on what light you have and having different Kelvin filters within that unit so you can choose what Kelvin you want to use will be very, uh, very useful for lighting different skin tones because everyone needs a different skill, uh, Kelvin temperature depending on their skin tones. And more of a purple ish. Someone is going to yell at me from using my purple with my theater background, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, gobos. Well, I said, well, Jake, you revamped the whole gobo wheel. What do they look like? Well, here we go. This, like I said, is the only one we kept. And let me sharpen this up for you guys. And there we go. So that's the only gobo we kept from the 4Z. Now we're going to talk. We're going to have a lot more texture and breakup options. And a shout out to Bob again, who him and I played a key role in choosing these gobos. So we have more of a triangular te texture breakup. This one you may look familiar to the one we just had in the 4Z, but this one has a little bit more of a. Uh, uh, this is a technical term, squiggles, <laughs> in it. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have a linear gobo. This is more of a star spotted gobo, and this one makes for some really cool hashtag beamage. That's right. And then here is that awesome dichroic glass four color split gobo. And let me sharpen this up for you guys. And then there you go. So that right there is one impressive just looking at it from a spot, but you're never really going to be looking at it exactly like this when you're using these fixtures in the field. When you do get to see this shining down on the stage, it is such an awesome texture. <laughs> hashtag purplish, that's right. It is such an awesome uh, sh textured 
not textured, but uh, multicolored glass look to it. Um, and I think it looks really great for the houses of worship. So that is my six gobos in the gobo wheel. Again, a lot more texture options for church and theatrical environments. And now I am going to go back, let's see, which one should I choose? Let's go with our triangle one here, because I like how separated those are and how the spaces in between them. So let's talk about the two frost filters we have been mentioning in the past. And I believe I'm pronouncing this right, Hazil. Uh, asks what light models are these and we're talking about the four, Focusbot 4Z, 5Z and 6Z. Right now we are talking about the Focusbot 5Z. So we're going to introduce our first frost and that is going to choose, oh, I have my rate at three seconds still so that's why it was that slow fade in. So the first frost filter on this unit is the heavy frost. And you may say well what's the point of adding a gobo with a heavy frost and there isn't any. But I just wanted to show you how that looks. And then the second frost, this is where using a gobo with a frost filter is going to look really nice. And that will move the optical path again, just because there's not a lot of space for all these things to move around. I am, don't want to move that. Let's see if I can get this focused in anymore for you guys. And now you have a really uh, soft edge to your gobo effect. And this can be applied over all the gobos, including the dichroic glass gobo. And you can also add your circular prism into this. And it will look awesome as well. Let me show you. So I'm just going to put everything in and then make it look nice. So now you have a nice lighted, lightly frosted gobo effect. And this doesn't do it justice just looking at the projection of the unit, but when you're seeing these coming down like as backlight or so for the audience can really see the hashtag beamage of the light, it is super nice and soft. Uh, it, again, it just doesn't do it justice looking at it. It, it is a great visual effect. Not only that, I'm going to take my gobo out and see you later, circular prism. And uh, this will also apply a light frost to the open spot. So I'm going to zoom this out, get this nice focused in, and throw that frost filter in. And now I have a nice, lightly, nicely frosted light. So if you are having, let's say, uh, let's go continue with the church theme here. Let's say you have your pastor and he's standing at the altar and he's giving, you know, the, he's giving the speech, the sermon for today, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now you can light him with this and you can also throw in, you know, the CTB or the CTO color filter to color correct for his skin tone. And now you have a great highlight for that person. And it doesn't have any harsh lines on it, so if he de does decide to walk out of his light, and this is true with, I'm sure, church people as well as actors, I know for sure, uh, they will walk out of their light eventually. Um, now you won't see a hard edge as they pass in and out of that spot. It'll be a nice, lightly frosted spot. So now let's take the same exact look, and we will throw in the heavy frost. And now this is just a beautifully, nicely frosted wash. And now, and you can achieve color corrected, Kelvin color corrected washes from this unit as well. And you can do this with any color. You can do a stage wash with this. Uh, they're super versatile and quick compact. All right, so that is the light and heavy frost. Um, <clears throat> I will go over the circular and linear prism again really quickly here, but I'm not going to spend too much time since it's exactly the same thing that was in the 4Z. But uh, yeah, they're, they're rotatable, indexable, uh, and all the bells and whistles, and cannot stack on top of each other due to the size of the fixture. So it has all the bells and whistles that the 4Z has, plus a lot of extra 
features. Now, moving on to the 6Z, um, before we actually show the unit, there's a couple more things I want to talk about this um, in terms of hardware features. We actually get a locking pan and tilt on the 6Z, which is really nice for um, not necessarily permanent installations, but for production usage if you want to put these up you know, for people who are taking lights up and down either for weekend events or even every single day, having a locking pan and tilt is really important. Uh, it just helps you be able to keep a hand on the fixture and not swing it all over the place. So that's a big feature by itself right there. Then on the back, you also have three and five pin DMX ins and outs, while the 4Z only have one. The 4Z has three pin, the 5Z has, I'm gonna see, the 4Z has three, I said that right, three pin, the 5Z has 5 pin, and then the 6C has 3 and 5 pin. But on top of that, it also has RG45 in and out ports, and that's for the included ArtNet functionality. So if you don't want to run these over regular DMX, you can run ArtNet to them and be able to run them over ArtNet, which is cool for more of the integrators who don't want to use up all the DMX channels. And it has locking power ins and outs in the back as well. All of these have USB service update ports, so when fixtures have updates, which we roll out updates, which can include upgrades to dimming, upgrades to pan and tilt smoothness. There's so many different upgrades, uh, updates, excuse me, that we push out every now and again. So uh, if you've had your units for a, quite a while, reach out to our service department and, uh, or even just look online and see if the manual has an upgrade, uh, an update to it. You can, and that will be shown on the very first or second page. Uh, and request that update from us. And as simple as putting on a USB stick, you can connect all the same lights in one DMX run, plug it into one of the units, the first one, and it will update every single unit at the same time, or you can do it them individually if you don't want to take them down. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, those are the only hardware up, uh, upgrades other than just having a very nice, large glass optical lens on the front. The 4 and the 5Z also have glass optical lenses, but they're a lot smaller. The 6Z has a lot larger of an optical lens at the front, and that is to be able to show, be able to allow it to achieve a lot larger of a zoom range. Just gonna take a look at the comments here. Um, Jordan asks, zooming range is the same uh, from the 4Z and the 5Z? Yes, the zoom range is the same. It's 11 to 22 degrees. The 6Z uh, is completely different, and I'll go in depth with that right now. All right, cool. I think I've caught up with all my questions. <clears throat> so let's dive into the 6Z. All right, so color. I'm gonna make this a little more centered for you guys. Color wheel, let's go over them. Uh, actually, the first color wheel is pretty much exactly the same as the 5Z and, uh, 4Z and 5Z. The second color wheel is pretty much exactly the same from the 5Z. This is your CTO. Um, actually, it's a little different, but it has very similar, uh, similar colors in it, just in a different order. There's your CTO and CTB filters over darker blue cyan and a nice light yellow. And I'll go through those again slowly one more time. So here's the first wheel, red, orange, oops, skipped one, green, light blue, more of a UV, magenta, and yellow. The second color wheel, this is more of a blood orange. This is more of a lime green. Uh, this is what you could call a cyan, but it's a little different than cyan. It's more of a tur turquoise. Here's your CTO filter and CTB filter. So this is more of a white, uh, a daylight look CTB. Uh, darker blue cyanish and more of a, it's a different tone of yellow. And all these, again, it's a color wheel, so all these can be split colored and rotated, et cetera, et cetera. It, if you want, if you want to have that crazy color scroll effect, you can just open those back up. So those are the colors. 
And you can layer them on top of each other uh, to try to get different colors. Just keep in mind, this is, that is what we would call uh, subtractive color mixing. So the more you add to in front of the, the more you add from the source, the less output you're going to get. So you can try to add, you know, like right now I have the lime green and orange on to try to have different filters. You can mix these um, if you'd like, if you have enough output from there. Talking about gobos, we have two gobo wheels like the 5Z does. Let's, and there are some of them are similar. Let's go over them. Let me just get this nice and sharp for you guys. Here we go. Nice. So here's the first gobo. And like I said, uh, when we first started talking about this, but I will go over it again, they both rotate. Um, so this is when you can start getting really cool effects. And nice and fast, but also super slow. And this, is, this uh, will actually go smoother than the 5Z and the 4Z as the motors are slightly higher quality and um, will be a little slower and smoother. Uh, not by much, but there is a noticeable difference, in my opinion. Second gobo, we, second gobo uh, a nice dotted texture breakup option. Here is a more linear line, and this is, in my opinion, more for aerial effects that you can achieve with the 6C, and, or I like to say, as I like to say, hashtag beamage, uh, and they're also looking more impressive. This in my opinion, is one of my favorite gobos on the gobo wheel. Uh, that as well as this gobo right here, and we'll get into it when we talk about gobo morphing, but allows you to have some really cool animated effects. So I'm just going to keep that slow rotation on and keep on moving. This is more of a uh, circular, I, I'm not even sure what you would call this, circular uh, dotted Gobo, <laughs> and this is actually cool when you add the circular prism in it, or even just this by itself zoomed out with some haze because you can actually see uh, the prism. It, it almost mimics by itself a, I'm not going to count each individual thing, but uh, like our Visibeam 12RX, a 24 facet or even more prism. So this is a cool animated effect to zoom out. Again, a nice gobo that you can use for effects. and gobo number seven. And just like with the, if the gobo wheel rotates, it will also index so you can have this centered. And let's say, let's say it was kind of, look, yours looks like this when it's centered. Well, you can just go ahead and correct that just like that. So that is the gobos on the first gobo wheel. Now let's go over the second. And these do, okay, so here's something I want to address right now while we're looking at this. And you might say, well, why, well, why does this have a different focus from your first gobo? So, whoops, don't want to show that yet. So this is my first gobo wheel in focus. Well, why is the second gobo wheel that far off? And we did this on purpose. Um, the reason why we did this is because, one, well, you need, they're, they're at different optical paths within the optics of the unit, but secondly, it's so you can achieve a really cool gobo morphing effect. And I'll dive deep into this when I go over all the gobos, but just to show you really quickly here, I can focus in on my cross gobo, but I can also focus in on the other gobo. And we'll get into that in one second. So I am going to take this gobo and focus it up so you can see what we're talking about. And this is again the cross gobo. So you might notice some similarities in these, the same focus spot line. And again, these can be rotated if you don't like how, uh, if you don't like where it's positioned, say you want more of an X or you want a cross or whatever way you want it, you can index it how you'd like it. I'm just going to center this up right now. Gobo 2 is a more, is a thicker. Um, breakup option. 
you may notice that if you are have a theatrical, if you do have a theatrical background, you may notice that a lot of these gobos look similar to a lot of the gobos you've used in your ellipsoidal units. And that's really because, well, you had two theater guys pick out the gobos for this unit. And, um, and we kind of chose some of our similar favorite gobo breakup options to put in this light. Moving on, we have the pinwheel. We have this cool, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, kind of like sunset moon. <laughs> it's just a random name I just came up with for it. And this can have, this is a cool effect, just the way it rotates and it moves in the air. Gobo 5 is that same similar circular gobo, which I actually really enjoy. Uh, a texture breakup option, which is in the 5Z as well. And here is the texture four color split, four color dichroic glass split. Right here. And that's a very nice gobo. Um, so let's talk about gobo morphing in depth here. So I can take, what is my two favorite combinations? Let's take, where is my flower? Hold on, let me, let me do this so I can see what I'm looking at here. So here's my flower gobo not rotating, so I'm just going to center that out. And I can take my second gobo, and I'll just go run through the second, I'll just run through the second gobo wheel with this one gobo here by itself. And just to show you one application of it. And if you haven't checked it out, check out the three different gobo morphing videos we did on the 6Z, uh, which allow for some, have some really cool effects. Victor asks, is it easy to change gobos? Um, and that's another topic <clears throat> that we are interested in doing a video on. If you guys would like to see more of an in-depth how to change the gobos and service to your units, let us know if that's something you're interested in, and we could definitely make that happen for you guys. But yes, the gobos are very easy to change. It's just a simple little uh, metal retainer ring you pull out, and boom, there you go. Just moving along the different gobos. Uh, let me slow this down. And this is where you start running the focus and you can get some really cool lights, uh, effects. So you take your one pretty hard edge flower look and now you can make that almost to like a really cool, I'm not a flower expert, but uh, I don't know, daisies? I don't know what they're called. <laughs> uh, a more like texturized uh, option. And I'm just gonna actually go and rotate my flower gobo the other way nice and slowly just so you can start getting some really cool texture options and I'm gonna throw in my where is my yellow my light yellow and boom there you have a sunflower cool animated effect continuing on I'm running let me run the focus on here a little bit get it right in the middle there Gobo 4, Gobo 5, each Gobo has its different, uh, you know, cool things it can do with it. Gobo 6, some look cooler than others. And then here is that dichroic glass floor color split. And I'm just going to stop that right now and I'm going to run my focus out and you can see there's a really cool multicolored gobo effect. And that, I'm not going to go any more depth with them. Uh, you can see, like, I have one in the background right now slowly circulating, but a lot of cool animated effects that you can achieve without the addition of an animation wheel um, just by gobos. And, you know, if, you're, if you want, if you really have the time, you can actually go and replace different gobos with other gobo, the gobos that are stocking here with other gobos and have some really cool animated effects within there. Um, let's talk about the frost really quick. So here's the frost one, which is <clears throat> the light frost. So 
adds just a nice little halo effect to it. And you can fuzz that out even further by writing your focus in or out. And out. And my second frost, which is the heavy frost. And I'm going to take this zoomed all the way out. And I'm going to run the focus all the way out as well. And now I'm pretty much washing that entire curtain or drape with color. I mean, with light. Now I can what, make it red, just use the different colors on here. And that's, that's quite an impressive frost, if you ask me. And it's very nice and even as well. All right, that is your second frost. And then you have, as the other uh, the four and five as you do, you have a light, I mean, a circular prism. And uh, let me get this back so you can actually see what we're doing here. Here's your circular prism. You can go ahead and throw the gobos in these. Add a little bit of a spin to them. And that's how I'm making the animated effect behind me, just with the circular prism pointing opposite. And this covers such a large area. Um, Charlotte, can you help me out? I actually can't remember the zoom range on this. Could you look that up for me? I knew I'd forget something. But um, the zoom range is a, is a lot larger on the 6Z than the 5Z. And I'm going to get that exact details for you guys right now. That, so again, you can throw the linear prism or circular prism. But now I'm going to go ahead and iris in. And the iris is essentially a, a mechanical. If you're not familiar with an iris, what an iris is, an iris essentially is a me mechanical piece that will z how do I explain this to non-lighting or camera people? Uh, it will essentially make the open area that your light travels through smaller, allowing you to choose the exact width of the, the beam, really. Um, so let me get rid of all of my prisms here and just have a nice open spot. Start from scratch. There it is. So the zoom range on this, on the 6Z, is 9 to 28 degrees, while on the 4Z and 5Z, it's 11 to 22. So you do get a lot, you do get a lot more de degrees zooming in and zooming out. Now the iris. So this is an open spot, centered. I'll take it nice and wide, and I will bring my iris in. And you can actually focus in on the iris itself. Let me see if I can do that. Here you go. So you can see exactly what it does. Oops, that was my frost. Don't want to do that. And here's the iris. So it goes all the way in and zooms out. And then to make it even smaller, I can zoom all the way into that type beam. And then you can iris in from there to make it even tighter. And there you go. So that's the tightest it can go. And that's uh, pretty, pretty tight for a spot unit. You know, if this was a hybrid beam spot wash, you know, that'd be one thing. But uh, to get that tight on a spot is really nice. So if you even just wanted to use this, you don't have follow spots and get the headshot of a person uh, you know, in a particular moment, you can iris in and just shoot the head as opposed to the whole body. You can throw the light frost in there and that will frost it out so you don't have a hard edge. V a lot of valuable tools and features in the Focus Spot 6C. Um, Victor asks, how far away is the unit to the wall? So right now I'm at a 23 foot throw distance and it's just going from my light here to the wall. Um, but useful operations of the 6Z with that 300 watt, almost 10,000 lumen chip, uh, you know, you can shoot a lot farther than what we're doing now. Uh, so there's a lot of different applications and depth that you can get with this unit. So let me just um, think here and let's go over what we talked about. 
We talked about the color. We talked about the gobos, how you can do go different gobo morphing within this unit. Uh, we talked about the zoom, the focus. We talked about the iris in this unit. We have two different frosts, a light and heavy, circular prism, linear prism, and these cannot be stacked on top of one each other either just because that's we're trying to keep these units compact as possible with having the most feature sets as possible. Um, and let's show the dimming now, and I think that's the only thing we have yet to show. I'm going to switch to my theatrical dimming curve, make this look all nice and focused in here, and do a three second fade. And now we will focus out. Nice, smooth, and slow dimming. It's quite impressive from an LED output. And if you're not familiar with how LEDs work, uh, as opposed to an incandescent lamp, LEDs are actually constantly strobing. To, so to get, a, to get a smooth curve out of an LED unit is actually a lot of technology and a lot of uh, engineering actually has to go into the software in order to get that uh, effect. Um, now all I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to address that one question, two questions that we had earlier. Um, one, yes, Daniel, actually, that's exactly what I was about to say. How quickly would it complete a tan or pan or tilt movement effect? So I'm going to grab the 6C here, and I'm just going to go on this on the fly, grab my pan and tilt, and start moving it around. Uh, Candice, can you switch to me so they can see the unit? Thanks. I'm going to set this at 50% on both, and we'll slowly zoom in and out. Well, that's a little fast. So. I'm going to set them one to one so it goes all the way around the room and slow it down so you can see how it actually moves. So it's pretty quick for a medium-sized unit. Um, let me do the same with the 5Z, since it is actually a little bit smaller of a unit, so it's less weight for the motors to be moving around. Let me do that same circular effect, go one to one, so it goes to its maximum in and out, maximum pan and tilt. Obviously, the pan will be slower than the tilt because, oh, let me turn that on too, that would help. <laughs> um, obviously the pan is going to be a little bit s uh, slower than the tilt because this pan range can go up to 540 and the tilt range is only 270 so it's a lot less to move so I'm just going to slowly continue going faster here and while we're talking about this the other question I wanted to Um, the one other thing I wanted to talk about is what well, question we had earlier was the decibel range and how loud these units are. So, while well, that's going on behind me, um, these units by themselves um, do get, not loud, but they do have a certain decibel uh, noise to them. Uh, and they, when the LED is on for an extended length of time, they do start to get a little noisy. And that's really with any fixture that you're talking about that's going to be fan cooled. Excuse me. We have implemented uh, more quiet fans with these lights, but that's just something, you know, air is moving and the motors are churning. It's going to get loud eventually. But one thing you can do, I think we've seen enough of the movement effect. One thing you can do, and something we have also engineered with the 5Z and 6Z, is what we call um, uh, uh, silent uh, running mode and essentially what that will do is that will kick the full intensity of the unit down to around 65 to 70 percent of its true output but it will a certain decibel range. Let me repeat that again because I think we're having mic issues. So we have a silent fan running mode that you can actually trigger within the DMX console so you can turn it on and off. And what that will do is turn, take the LED's brightness from full and turn it, take it down to around 60, 65, 70% of its full output 
and that will keep the fans at low, no noise speeds. And you may ask, well, why would I want to turn that on and off? You'd think if I'm installing them, just throw them up there, make them so they don't have any output. Well, the reason why you want to be able to turn them on and off via DMX is because some looks, you really want their full intensity. For instance, I'm just thinking of a uh, you know, church example, keeping this church for this uh, live stream. When the choir is singing or the whole, the whole congregation is singing a song, you don't need them to be quiet. You know, if you want really cool animated effects on the stage and you want them super punchy and super bright, turn the silent dimming mode off and let them just turn on. But when you're having a quiet moment, when the pastor is speaking, giving a sermon, you don't want your units, and especially if you're using these in multitude, and when they're full on, they will get loud. It also depends what kind of ceilings you have. There's a lot of different specs that go into it that an integrator could answer for you, but essentially, uh, when you're having those quiet moments, you can turn on the silent dimming, the silent fan mode via DMX, and you will not, you will not uh, hear them at all because they'll enter a. It, it won't allow the fans to kick up to a certain decibel level, and that's what brings the LED temperature. That what brings the LED brightness down. So, um, you know, you do, there is some give to it, but it's an important feature to have for those silent moments. Let's see, um, let's go on, just looking through some questions here. Uh, Michael says, wish the zoom was a bit tighter. Really looking for a hybrid fixture. And yes, that's true. I would definitely recommend you check out more of our Visi line um, to have a true hybrid fixture um, there's a lot of parts that go into it. Um, uh, check out our CMY300 would be a great example of that. Richard Howell says, all the other breakups are amazing. And I agree. You know, we really took the time and the thought into this unit. And this is a good shot of the 60s, two, two focus spot 60s performing a really cool global morphing effect behind me. And I think that's it. Any other questions um, while I sign off here and then we'll end the stream. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Again, we went over the 4Z, 5Z, and the 6Z um, focus spots, of course. And these are our intermediate line of units. You know, they're not the, the, the smallest, the most cheapest, but they're also not the biggest and the brightest and the most feature set. But kind of where ADJ is and the line of all the other manufacturers, we try to hit the middleman and give the people that want the best bang for their buck and give them the best products as possible. And that's where the 6C and the 5C and the 4C are really nice for people that don't need a lot, a lot of features, but need more than what the basics can give you. So at a really nice competitor's price. Um, that being said, Uh, Hazel May asks, when are these going to be available? The 4 and the 5Z are already shipping, and I believe the 6Z will be shipping very soon if it's not already shipping. Um, but on top of that, I think we're going to end it here. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a blast. And stay tuned for next week with where Chuck Green is going to be going over the Avante line of speakers, which are really, really awesome, and we're super excited to show you. Uh, thanks for joining us. My, name's been Jay my name is Jake Rhodes, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.